Welcome to Dragon Ball Super Dope. I am your beginning host for today, GB Edits. Today we have the super duper, the super saiyan himself. He may not have much hair, but I'll tell you what, he can definitely tell where your hair follicles are coming from and how each point fails. Kyle, Kyle, how's it going, man? Super Dope! That's great. All right. Next up, we have the man himself, the legend. He comes from a place far away in the middle of America, and you may not know exactly where, but damn it, he will always be there for you, just like your mobile game, Dokkan. And that is Hayden. Hayden, what's up, man? How you doing? I love my intro. I really love that. I'm what glad fuck, you dude? enjoyed. I got a and really last brilliant. but not <laughs> least, we have the man of the hour. The man who is always ready to come quick and also say something to make sure you stay listening. The man himself, Rayshon. What's up, Rayshon? Super dope. <laughs> That's what's <laughs> up. That's what's up. And of course, I am GB Edis, like I said. Uh, and Kyle's going to take it away now. Wow, I'm really glad that I gave you permission to do the intro on this episode where you were very nice to those two guys, but like straight out the gate, you had like shit planned to attack me with. That was fucked. I don't <laughs> think so. No, I was because I was literally. I think it takes a real man to, to walk around bald like you do, Kyle. Yeah, you know me, I man. I well, do that. Nah, it's tough. It's tough out here for an ugly dude with no hair. Shut up. I understand, man. I'll fucking. You know what? Never mind. Got all those Anyways, eyes looking at Kyle, you. I was basically trying to say that you basically are able to just like looking at hair, you're able to tell the follicles of each chapter. So that means you know where everything's coming from. You know where it's going to go. You know how it's oh, going to lead. Oh, look at that. He, he made that sound short, nice, didn't he? You can basically tell somebody like, hey, you're going to do this or hey, you're going to do that. Like, you know, this Dragon Ball franchise, like the back of your hand. Where so you're just like, bitch, I own this shit. So is this an example of me being hypersensitive and misinterpreting your intent with your comment, or are yeah. you just really good on the fly and that repurposing your previously stated bullshit? Yeah, uh, Por que no las dos and the first one. Where? It's kind of like if somebody be like, "Well, oh, fuck you. Huba. Like, I didn't call you Huba. because you were black, but because your skin is like the, mid the midnight <laughs> darkness in the sky or some shit. You'd be like, oh, okay. It's Whatever like you say. dark chocolate on a moonless night. <laughs> sound great don't it anyway it's not a big deal listen <sighs> we're here to talk about chapter 83 of the dragon ball super manga after uh some heated racial stuff right up front dude like two strong end bombs that's probably like the fourth and fifth one in the history of this uh show that's really cool i guess yeah, i don't know how to feel about it <laughs> uh things sound different from my end it's because i'm using a different mic i'm in a different situation in terms of location so things sound yeah he looks different. like he's in a little dollhouse guys yeah, long story short, I'm in my 22-year-old sister's room today, okay? I'll be here for probably a few more days, and then I'll be back in my place. So, not my typical microphone, not my typical room. Things sound different on my, or things sound different from me. Uh, forgive us, listener, but we're going to talk about 83. Bardock versus Gas. Pardieu. All right? So, I don't know if there's so much to run through this chapter with in terms of like the sequential order because a lot of it was very 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 reaction heavy and i have to say uh we were talking in the pre-show on patreon uh he did you pointed it out these frames these these uh panels it's a beautifully drawn chapter oh definitely uh, was bad. definitely dig the visuals in this chapter but it is super action heavy so there's not much of a point uh in running through all of it although i did just realize that uh I did forget to write down one thing at the end of this chapter because um, I'm a dummy and I did a very poor job of my outline. But, all right, there's like four major uh, key components, takeaways from this chapter that I want to talk about with you guys tonight about this Bardock versus Gas chapter, okay? I think a lot of people will think that I'm going to try to shit on it and there are still certain things that I... Actually, there's another thing I wanted to ask about in the spoilers last week, guys, right? For me, I'm... Still kind of going back and forth. How do you guys feel about Gas and Elac giving Bardock the heads up that Frieza is about to, quote unquote, you know, drop a meteor on their head, basically? Uh, that was revealed in the spoilers last week. I'm still unsure how to feel about it. 
I don't know who wants to start, but how do you guys feel about it? Good or bad? I feel like I'm in the minority and thinking it's bad. A lot of people think I'm an idiot for thinking it's bad, even though, again, I'm unsure about it. So fuck all y'all. But Rayshon, what do you think? I would like to speak. I think it it shows that there was a relationship there, that Frida actually like mingled with them and treated them almost like they were Dodoria and the other one. So it just shows that there was more of a relationship there and that he like low-key trusted them. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, was, but is that good or is that bad? Well, I mean, I guess. I mean, it just shows that they have a relationship. So, I mean, it shows that eat from their side, they're doing what they doing what they want to do. They're basically getting on Frieza's good side, but they're also advising their own plan. So it just shows that they are the ones who are outsmarting Frieza. Yeah. It's hard if, to believe. if they really doing that. It's tough to believe the Galactic Emperor is such a fucking, you know, gossip girl and just like shares all of his <laughs> bullshit with all the people who work with him. <laughs> Hayden, what do you think? I'm honestly, I, I don't know. As I've, I've actually, as I've thought about it, it's, um, it was a weird advancement because I do partially feel like it adds to the Bardock trying to save the planet. But at the same time, I feel like it takes away a little bit because that could just be me, but I feel like it takes away because it's a, um, I think it was the bro, like take that the minus uh, uh, manga and the Broly that animated that was basically Bardock had no clue what was going on. He had the suspicion something might be about to happen. But what this is, it kind of takes away from that. Whereas, okay, something probably is going to happen. I just don't know what's going to happen. So, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, when I said that I was unsure about how I felt about it on Twitter, I got fucking ruled by a response that got like I don't know, probably a hundred fucking likes or retweets or whatever where it was like, why this literally solves for the whole Bardock just had a hunch thing, which that's what yeah. I was just about to say. Cause I think it, this makes a little bit more sense to him. Just like, you know what? I feel like there might be something happening. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, but, but at least but the way I was thinking of it with him doing that, they already kind of showed a lot of distrust in Frieza and his dislike against the Saiyans. That's the way I was saying it. So he's like there. I feel like this is going to happen. He even said, if nothing happens, I'll go get Kakarot myself. So with him saying like something's going to happen, that does, at least in my opinion, kind of takes away from that by getting rid of like confirming some suspicions that that none of the Saiyans per, uh, previously knew or at least may not have known. Hmm. But even with technically with that, you can still say that Gas told him, you know what I mean? Because hmm. it doesn't take away Gas telling him that, oh, I, I feel like there's some shit about to happen. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, don't I can know. see that. I just. Eh, eh. GB, what do you think, man? Um, I agree in a sense with you and also what kind of like what Rayshawn was saying. So <clears throat> I think that it was interesting the way that they put that into the chapter but my personal opinion was that it could have been executed a little bit better uh, just because it's like, we don't, it's like we do and don't know the whole timeline of like, Hey, this is when all this is really happening. Right. Like we don't fully completely know. And we don't know, like maybe it's just like after this Bardock goes on the mission to, uh, to wherever planet he was going to, and then comes back to, where Dragon Ball Super Broly basically began. Um, yeah, which I think is what they're going to do. Like, I, I'm pretty sure this takes place maybe, I don't know if it's days, I don't know if it's a month, but a relatively short period of time until the Broly movie happens. So exactly, it, it, it kind of makes me think uh, in a couple of ways, like, like I understand like the whole he has a hunch or like, just has a bad feeling or whatever. I understand wanting to solve for that. I guess I personally never thought it was that egregious of a plot because who cares? It was a TV special about Goku's dad and he needed somebody to fight. Like I didn't try to over-engineer the plot on that one as a kid. So I guess I haven't as an adult either, but what do you got, Ray? I got a question. Um, two things, actually. First thing was, hey, um, on this same day, it wasn't this the, um, the Saiyans were revolting on this day with Frieza. Wasn't, wasn't that part of what was happening? When before Frieza blew up the whole Saiyan planet? Yeah, well, Bardock tries to like lead the battle against him and be like, fuck oh, it, I thought that was King Vegeta. This guy's uh, a dickhead. Uncle. Yeah. Because I was about to say, I'm surprised King Vegeta doesn't know anything about them. He's a bitch, man. Frieza made him kneel. There's no other way to say it. Like, King, uh, uh, King Vegeta was freezes bitch but for whatever reason bardock was like just having historically anyway until this chapter came out bardock was just having a bad day 
But now he's been tipped off to the fact that this is going to happen by gas, which I was like, does he need to know? Alec then like reiterates it again at the end of the chapter. And it's like, all right, mm-hmm. I get it. You know, I make, I think Alec telling him and then thinking that he's about to kill him and shooting him dead. I'm like, oh, cool. All right. It makes sense to me why uh, Alec would tell him at that point. Cause he's like, this motherfucker's dead anyway. He's not going to be able to tell the Saiyans about it. Hop. But like gas telling him beforehand, it's like, hey, even you don't know, you don't actually know. But again, I just feel like it solves a problem that wasn't a real big problem. And he doesn't also, he doesn't believe them. He's like, what are you talking about? Or like, honestly, like the way it's written, the way it's translated, it almost sounds like he doesn't understand what they're talking about at first. And then Alec at the end gives him the, you know, the, the more visual, uh, you know, the meteor on the head. Like if that happens, don't be surprised. So I just think that it would make more sense for them to have just left it alone entirely instead of like tipping them off. I don't know. I just think it solves a problem. That wasn't a real problem, but let's not get caught up on it before I get fucking ratioed on Twitter again. Yeah. Um, very action heavy chapter. What I did think was very redeeming about this chapter was the fact that the whole impetus for Bardock continuing to fight wasn't like, I have to protect this Namekian, I have to protect this kid, even though that eventually is the outcome of it, right? But he's like, no, I just want to kick your ass. Like, I have to defeat you. Like, I was like, all right, cool. Keeping it with like the, the OG Bardock vibe where like, a blood, you know, just gets my blood pumping. I just want to kick ass and defeat the foe on the other end. I like that. I thought that was pretty well done. I like that they didn't lean into like sappy ass. I'm a dad and I have kids at home. Bardock, like I've seen enough of that through Dragon Ball Minus and the retcon to Bardock. I'm glad they didn't do that for this chapter. What'd you guys think? I thought it was fucking dope. Show that yeah. same pride. And the first time we've really seen it, you know what I mean? Where it's just like, I'm going to fight you because I want to fight you. Fuck what happens around me is being you. Yeah. So I like, I like that. It's, it kind of showed me a little Vegeta there because I don't know if Goku's like that. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a it's like a race thing. It's like the Saiyan blood fucking pumps through us all, man. And this is like the eventual trait that we all inherit is we just want to kick each other's asses to the end. I would love to be like that in a situation. Well, like, you know what? Fuck it, man. We. I don't think it'd away. be very practical in real life, man. Fuck it. Yeah. If I had to go, that's the way I want to go. Fuck it. Hold on a second. Hayden, thoughts? Yeah. What do you think, man? Uh, I like the, uh, I did like the action aspect of it. It was, I'm not going to go into all the details of things I personally didn't care for and it comes down to, but I did like the action aspect of it because I was, first time I was on was the first half of the fight, which I love. Bardock, you know, favorite second favorite Dragon Ball character. And it was all fun of seeing, that seeing Bardock and all this stuff, but I'll go into the uh, latter half later. But I like overall did like the fighting aspect of the chapter. Yeah. Uh, again, beautifully drawn chapter. Like, oh yeah. Super um, visually, visually stunning, man. I liked it a lot. Tori Taro. I know I bust on the guy a lot, but he did a great job with this chapter. All of it, like the action sequences right down to the paneling. Uh, very engaging chapter, visually speaking. Uh, GB. Any thoughts on this uh, being Bardock's reasoning for continuing to whoop ass? Um, well, the fact that literally he said, like, oh, I'm a Saiyan. It's my Saiyan pride. I was like, there we go. I like it. I like <laughs> it a lot. So, uh, yeah. GG's to Bardock and GG's to Toyotaro. Uh, it just good. makes you think he'd take it hard on himself if he left. Like, he'd be like, fuck, why do I let that little guy just do me like that? Some shit. <laughs> Yeah, well, actually, that trend, yeah, exactly. So that, that's the next thing I want to talk about is the Tarambo wish. So he gets out of there, he meaning Manito, he gets back to his house, uh, rustles into his fucking dragon ball jar, pulls out the two balls, makes the wish, summons the dragon. So the wish he tries to make, we know. Uh, the spoilers were kind of a cliffhanger. We weren't sure who it was going to, who the wish was ultimately going to affect. We knew it was going to be an alien, but which alien, Bardock or Gas? Uh, turns out being Bardock and he makes the wish, Manito makes the wish to Tarambo to transport him back to his own world. So he refuses the wish, much like Goku does uh, when he's fighting Frieza on Namek. So it's definitely meant to draw the parallels there, right? 
Um, but he Bardock ends up saying that his wish is he wants his sons to grow up to thrive. And we don't see Minato say the wish or anything like that. We just, the next shot is the dragon dissipating, the two balls floating up and shooting away like two shooting stars, right? What do you think Minato said? Do you think Minato said, uh, do you think Minato said Bardock's wish to Tarambo and said, hey, make his make sure that his sons grow up to be thriving? Like, is that what we're dealing with now? Was, I don't think so. Is everything we know Goku's accomplishments to be just at a fucking wish from the dragon? Because I think see, some that's people what I was look thinking. at it that way. What if like everything, like the wish made all those quindescents happen? Like, oh, he died on Earth, but there's Dragon Balls there. Yo, did you and, say like, quindescences? What the fuck's a I, 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 I fucked up. <laughs> no, I it's okay. Up. I get it. I say words inappropriately all the time. However, quindescences? That was a fucking tough one to fuck up like that. Man, that was great. <laughs> but you're on the something. I think that would be funny, but if, like every time some shit happened to Goku, it was the dragon that wish that literally made it so that he didn't either die or some other shit happened. Yeah, like he has like, a good luck charm aura around him or some shit, but apparently only the wish went to Goku because Raditz dies at like age fucking 20 or whatever. <laughs> but I mean, the wish is for them to thrive, not to um live forever. So. And technically, Raditz does thrive, doesn't he? I mean, I mean, they were granted, destroying hella planets before then. He just met his match. I'm saying, dude. Granted, yeah. uh, you know, a lot of it has to do with raping and pillaging, and, and at least he went down by a sand. I feel like sands like that better than dying by any other race. Well, you got to think about it like this, though. He went down by a sand plus a Namekian, so. Think about uh, this, man. Yeah. Bardock gets saved by a Namekian in this arc just so that way his sons can then grow up to consequently be killed, both of them, by the same Namekian in one shot. We <laughs> fucked up. That's funny. I mean... It's funny, but it's true. I don't know. I, I would like to think that Tarambo's wish has nothing to do with Goku's success in life. I don't think he actually made the wish. Well, then how do you get the dragon to leave? What do you think he did? Wish for a pair of underwear or something? Do you want to go for the ultimate Dragon Ball callback? That'd be sick, dog. Oh, my God. Imagine if Bardock gets back to the house at the end of this and Manito's just rocking a pair of underwear on his head. I'd be so happy. Bardock, I got your gift. You won. <laughs> oh, my God. That'd be so cool. Hayden, what mm -hmm. do you think, dude? What do you think about Tarambo, the wish Tarambo grants and maybe it leads, Goku's, leads to Goku's charmed-ass life? What do you think? I, uh, I don't want to talk about it yet. Okay. All right. So, uh, plays and jewels. No, because he saw the outline before the show, and like some people rage on, so he knows that he doesn't want to bring it up too early in the discussion because we're going to talk about it later potentially. I assume, right? Am I right? Yes. Me and Rayshon have not been fighting on the Patreon club. If you want to hear it, patreoncom slash Dragon Ball Super. Go subscribe for fucking five dollars or whatever. Also, I'm thinking about doing a fuck. I'll talk about it on Patreon if you want to hear it. Okay. There you go. I'm thinking about doing a thing on Patreon. There you go. Uh, GB, Tarambo Wish, how do you feel about that? I thought it was interesting. If you're asking more of what you said on the notes about if we think it's for, uh, like if the wish did come true or if they actually did fall through with the wish, um, I would say, yeah, I would say so just because, uh, I, I always forget the Namekian's name, Monito, um, Monito, Monito, um, did say after, like, you know talking about Bar like trying to make the wish for bardock he's like yes it is for like the future you've put hope into the future so i think that in a sense i would say yes he probably did of course we don't of course we don't know because we didn't see any panels whatsoever showing that so that's sort of like a maybe a back to the future sort of thing where it's like oh i did make that wish oh da, 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 da. look at you you've grown so much da, 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 da. whatever yeah, but, um, I think the wish was it, it, I'd call it like a wholesome moment just because it's like Manito's just that wholesome person in a sense, kind of, but not really where he's like, he has good intentions. But of course, you know, hey, he's guess braver what? in this chapter. Yeah, he's definitely braver. And I think it's I mean, you could probably chuck it up to being like, oh, you're younger in age. And when you're younger, you feel more brave. You feel more rash. You feel like you could do anything, you know? I guess um, that's a good point. So I think I think most likely that he did make that wish. And uh, 
I think it definitely is a very good wish to go upon because again, like I said, it it literally just shows you the roots of quote unquote Dragon Ball in a sense, which again, just my full opinion, just randomly saying this, don't care how you guys feel about it. I personally enjoyed it. I enjoyed this chapter because we got more lore and something I've said throughout many episodes is that I love lore Lore. behind stories. (laughs) If you give me something like hell, if you say for a whole um, like two seasons, we get uh, like a Frieza arc where we learn about King Cold and Frieza. Man, sign me up because I'd be ready for that. I would be so ready for that. But anyways, I would be too (laughs) for a situation like that. But it has to be a thing that builds that doesn't take away from already established stuff. Oh yeah. Agree. My big problem with the how people think this was just going to work or how it works or whatever is, you know, Goku, Goku always wins. Goku's plot armor. No, it could have literally what I'm from this thinking, wish. It could have been him escaping the downfall of the planet blowing up. That could have been the wish. Ooh, well, I mean, maybe that would provide them the luck to be off planet at the time. Yeah, dude, maybe that's it. Oh, shit. Maybe that's why both of them are off planet. Like the wish allows them to avoid the destruction so that way they escape the planet. That's and probably there's the still way. a future. Yo, I like that fucking interpretation, dude. Good point. That's way better than me thinking like they grow up with plot armor now. Poor Raditz plot armor expired at age 20 when he caught a <laughs> mocking go some po to the chest. <laughs> Yo, good call, man. All right, I'm into that. I like that. Um, I was thinking about that when GB was talking. I was like, wait, we, we're thinking too far ahead. Yo, what, if we, what if it's that? Usually you cut me off like that, and I'm like, this mother... And then that was beautiful. That was beautiful. All right, so... Sometimes I spur ideas. Yeah, you're a great conversation starter. Uh, one thing that I was very confused about in this chapter, and honestly, I'm not... Again, I'm not mad or happy about it one way or the other. I don't give a fuck. I did think they were doing it to uh, for a reason, though. Bardock gets his tail ripped off, right? And when I first saw this, I thought to myself, oh, my God, his tail's ripped off. You know what that means? He's about to go Super Saiyan. And then I thought about it in my head. And I'm like, I think that's a myth from when I was a kid that the fact that their tails, they started losing their tails in Dragon Ball Z, these few remaining Saiyans, and that didn't have like some kind of inhibition on them to channel their power toward their monkey side because that tail wasn't there anymore. That's what helped push them toward the Super Saiyan transformation. I thought that as a kid. I don't think that's a real thing. I think that's just my own weird headcanon. So listener hearing this, you guys... That's not like a real thing. I make shit up. You know, I've been watching this shit since I was fucking six. You know what I mean? I, I make reasons in my head. And I think this was a, a one that might've been more common with people than maybe you guys might remember, but they rip off his tail and I'm like, he's about to be a super saiyan dude. And then he doesn't, he just, I don't know. gets. I think probably like a Zenkai boost, whatever. We'll talk about that specifically in a moment, but what confuses me about them choosing to rip off his tail is that this is a few days before what ultimately we see in the Broly movie, which is canon. And Bardock very clearly has a tail in that motherfucker movie. Mm-hmm. So it's not just like a plot hole. It's not an oversight. It's not somebody saying like, whoops, we made a mistake. We forgot all about that movie we put out 18 motherfucking months ago. It's actually... uh somebody being very intentional about choosing to take his tail off because it doesn't really factor in, I don't think, to the ultimate outcome of this uh, battle. So why they rip the tail off? Like, the character Leek, who we see in the Broly movie, he has a scar on his head that he gets early on in this granola arc. Like, you see him get this arc, uh, this scar during this arc when they're battling the Cerulean's. And then he has that scar in the Broly movie. That level of detail, that attention to detail has been paid to this arc to this point. You're going to tell me just they just overlooked the fact that Broly has, uh, excuse me, that Bardock has a tail in the Broly movie and they ripped it off here for no reason? No way, dude. No fucking way. Anybody else have a conspiracy theory or am I just kind of high? I'll say this from my standpoint. I think I'm on the same headcanon as you. 
where it's like, oh, you know, if you take your tail off, you can become a Super Saiyan. And one thing that kind of led me to more of that thought, too, is one of the panels was Bardock had a different aura. Like, I don't know if you saw that. And to me, I was like, did. that low key looks like a Super Saiyan aura. It looks like something where it's like like before Goku got really mad and then turned into Super Saiyan, you know, like to me, that was I, I thought the same thing in a sense. Now, of course, again, we don't fully know the whole timeline of if Broly's right after this movie or whatever, you know. Um, I think it is, but, man. I think it's relatively short order. I mean, I guess we'll see. I, I kind of like my my possible thinking on this is maybe it's just like a month or two after because we I mean, I maybe I could be missing it from mm-hmm. Dragon Ball itself, like the original Dragon Ball. But maybe there is a a point for how long it takes for a tail to grow back because we don't at least from what I know, when the plot demands it. <laughs> That's when it grows yeah. back. Yeah. Oh my gosh, if we could really use a giant monkey right now to spice some shit up. Uh, yeah, it's have... back. Don't worry about it. Because <laughs> the only thing I have for a reference to that, and I hate saying it, is GT. And that was when, like, they're like, oh, the literal no, ass Super Saiyan 4. Let me just pull the tail again. <laughs> yeah. They, ju- they bust out, like, the but, giant uh, tweezers or whatever. Yeah. That's which funny. I, I don't want to ever reference that again. But, um, it's the first but, literal ass pull in Dragon Ball. I would mm-hmm. say kind of like for most animals, because it's like most animals don't necessarily grow a tail back unless it's like maybe a lizard. Because um, a lizard, of course, they can just, you know, grow their tail back. True. But um, we don't know how long that could be. That could be a couple of days. It could be a couple of weeks. It could be a couple of hours. It could even be months. But then the question would also be then, uh, another question, which it just kind of take you deeper down the rabbit hole, but I'll just leave it at that question there and continue with my point. The question would be then, why was Goku never able to grow a tail again? You know? Yeah, why That'd hasn't it respawned? Question. Why, why yeah. hasn't it happened? They didn't use his tail like four or five times. He's regrown yeah. it, I think, once or twice. Twice, maybe. I forget yeah. how many times Goku's regrown it, but Gohan's regrown it a couple of times. But like... We all know why they don't do it because the curious realm don't want to fucking draw them, dude. That's yeah, why he doesn't. Exactly. Do, I mean, we know that. So it's not so much a question of like, why doesn't it? Like, we know why. But my question is, knowing how um, detail driven that they've been in this to this point in this arc with some of the old lore stuff, some of the flashback stuff. You know what else it could be? Like, why take it off? If it was my turn yet, I think. Rayshon. Yeah, I haven't been jumping in or cutting anyone out. I've been sitting here waiting patiently. Rayshon. When you have to say that you've been sitting here waiting patiently, it does not reflect that you've been sitting here waiting patiently. What? I don't know. Uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. We'll, what we'll I fight was going to say yeah. is maybe this is what Manito makes the wish on. It's get Bardock baby his tail back. To get hey, one thing there. I always thought was weird, though, is how the fuck did Manito just have the balls? I, that just seems off to me, but all right. He's the keeper of him. He's like the one Namekian on the planet. I assume. No, anyway, Namekian I don't know. does that. Like, no, Namekian keeps the balls. Don't usually when you create them, they already disperse. Maybe he just goes off and collects them like preemptively before some bad stuff happens. I don't I know. know. No, Namekians can find the balls. Yeah, I guess he doesn't have a Dragon Ball radar. I just out of everything in the chat, that was the thing. I was like, how the fuck did he just have the ball? So, like, like Yeah. Um, anyway. like, why did you pull them out when they were coming destroying the planet? See, if I was the other Cerulean's, I would have been kind of pissed. Honestly, Honestly bro, out. like, in my head, I'm like, why didn't he just use the wish to teleport gas away? Like, you were about to do that for Bardock, <laughs> which, by the way, would have paralleled beautifully with what Goku did in the last fucking chapter, where it was like, I'm going to teleport this guy all throughout the universe to try to keep these people safe. In this case, Gas uh, loses his opponent. Bardock gets transported back to planet Vegeta. He's like, fuck. All right, never mind. I guess I don't have to go crazy. I'll leave now. Boom. Crisis averted. But no, Manito is just like thinking one way street. You know what I mean? Why not the other way? Why not just get rid of the other combatant? Makes no sense to me. Uh, Hayden, conspiracy theories on on tailgate. Oh, we can't call we can't call it tailgate, can we? Mm-hmm. I'm calling it tailgate now. Great. Uh, the thought that was going through my mind with the uh, thing was more of um, 
I feel like Manido, whenever he has his, you know, healing properties, though it's not the most powerful, immediately after he saw, oh, shit, Bardock, you're in pain. Let me heal you. And then the tail popped out. That may not be the case, but with it being as fresh, that was what was going through my head. The thought of him losing his tail and going Super Saiyan was what was going through my head for well, as soon as that happened. And then uh, the aura shot that GB was talking about, that really cool shot. And a thought was actually going through my mind. It's an old filler from Dragon Ball Z with Goku and Pycon taking on like the Ginyu Forest Cell and Frieza. Yeah. And, and there was a Super Saiyan power where it was just the normal color of Goku with the Super Saiyan aura around him, which was an animation error. Yes, exactly. Isn't that in a movie? That was in that's um that's false Super Saiyan and Lord Slug. This is an oh, actual okay. Super Saiyan power that was just wrong. The, the animation they just forgot to color in his hair. Oh damn! Yeah, and then we got dubbed Super Saiyan power. It's half the multiplier of Super Saiyan is what like it was stated to be, and that's what I thought that it was. And then it also that aura kind of went into the uh, my thought of the wish. If I'm allowed to, go ahead, man. If you're okay. allowed to, you guys are treating me like a motherfucking drill sergeant today. Fuck all of you guys, all right? Go ahead. Yeah, I, that's what I've been saying. You must have got them in line before I came on. <laughs> I didn't even, dude. I drew, I, I drew up four motherfucking bullet points, and everyone's like, all right, sorry, I don't want to fuck this up. Like, eggshells, man. Like, I'm, God damn. All right, Aiden, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm respectful. That's all I am. Yeah. No, you're very nice. Rayshon, on the other hand, we're in a fight. <laughs> what does that mean? God damn. GB, you're cool. I love you. Okay. All yeah, right. You said a nice thing about me. Go ahead, Hayden. Whenever it came down to the wish, it was a con- it was a thriving aspect of it, but at the same time, it was a different kind of thrive because I was actually rereading it as it was going on. Of Manito talking about selfishness, not wanting to wish him away, which Barak, I feel like by this thing is like saying pride is also, you know, some sort of selfishness from Manito. You know, trying to keep, I guess, selfish and not selfless selfish. It's the weird combination of the two but it was um i thought he wished bardock the power to beat gas in that fight with because you know for the majority of the, mm. the majority of the chapter he was getting his ass beat i he was honestly getting tossed around like horribly yeah. and then immediately went to overpowering in a split second zenkai or not i have not i could be wrong it's been a long time since i've seen zenkai's relevant in dragon ball at least to that extent but i wouldn't expect him to go from let's say ass beating to beating his ass in that short of span without some sort of outward help there's Uh, some things to suggest that you know and mainly it's just a lek coming up to gas at the end of it and being like we gotta train you more you know, like you, you lost your focus or whatever it was. Yeah. So like some of it's maybe gas was overconfident and got a little cocky and Bardock being the experienced veteran fighter he is like gun in his head and caught him off guard and continued to talk some smack. But I agree with you. It's like, dude, you're just getting your ass handed to you this entire, like mm-hmm. the first 60% of this thing. And, and then now enough- you're strong enough to just hang. Yeah. Cause like, well, thing- that's not technically true because gas had to transform. So he was holding him off a little bit I, in the beginning. He was still kind of getting his ass beat, though, in the beginning. Like, I, honestly. I, I'm just saying, I'm just trying to give him a little credit. I mean, he did I, force him to transform. He did. Bar- I love Bardock. It hates me to see Bardock getting his ass beat like Vegeta. Well, I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense, though. because That's the shouldn't. best thing about him is when he gets his ass beat. I'm like, damn, dude, good for you. I'm going in. <laughs> but then I thought, and then I would go the wish. I just thought it was Manito wishing for this Saiyan's family to succeed. Because I want him to succeed. Or it could be a, a wish for gas. Not gas, but what's the granola? Yeah, I I took it as, I mean, honestly, Rayshon, what you said before about have my sons be able to grow up to thrive, like, okay, uh, end up thriving, I think is the actual quote, want my sons to end up thriving. The idea that that's what affords them the opportunity to be away from the planet when it gets destroyed. I'm cool with that as my head cannon, dude. I'm, I'm very cool with that justification. I like that, man. Thanks. Because I can't let the stink of uh, a potential Dragon Ball wish be the reason that Goku's been so successful in his life. I can't do that. No. Just like I have a tough time accepting, like, Goku's a badass because his dad's a badass. I'm like, uh, Goku's a nice guy because his dad's a nice guy. Like, uh, I get it, dude. <laughs> well, I don't know. His, his dad's a badass. 
but he's not Goku badass. No, but like also, so are all of the Saiyans, right? I don't know. I'm kind of of the opinion like Zenkai boost ish situation. Maybe it has something to do with the tail. He loses the tail, like it, re- you know, releases some kind of barrier to access power to him. I don't, I don't know. know. Whoever says do it off guard, about- you know what I mean? It like, could be a lot of different <clears throat> combinations of things to kind of justify it. But at the end of the day, we're all very much just ready to accept, like, oh, yeah, that's a Dragon Ball ass pull. Yeah, that's how we ended around here with no actual justification at all. <laughs> I was personally hoping Bardock was going to get, like, be the first form of, like, Super Saiyan 4, but it'd be its own unique Bardock form with the tails that I thought of, but then the tail got ripped off, and so then the uh, false Super Saiyan, but then the power and all that was what was going through my head. It would have been would have been cool, like, the unique transformation Bardock. Like, what the fuck are you? I don't yeah. know. I'm about to kick your ass, though. Mm. That That's you, too inspired a choice for them to actually make, man, but that would have been cool to see. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I just noticed, isn't they fighting at nighttime? Shouldn't Bardock have already been a, a eight? Uh, I don't know. Didn't they destroy the moon early on in the war? Yeah, to take oh, out. Oh, yeah. Really. They, they destroyed destroy the moons moon. for this planet early on in the fight with the Cerulean's. Which was actually pretty smart, it. though. Yeah, man, Cerulean's are badass. But, but he think... should be able to make a, a, a moon. Or maybe that's something they learn later on. Yeah. Well, whatever. He, he defeats him. Alec ends up coming to save him. And then Alec kind of reiterates what Gasserini told him, expect a meteor to drop on your head, shoots him through the arm. He falls off a cliff and Alec's just like, all right, I got to go because Freeze is here. Uh, I assume you're dead, right? Yeah, you're definitely dead. That's what affords uh, him the opportunity to sneak off him and Naito reunite and he actually survives, right? So I'm going to ask you all a very yes or no question and then uh, it's yes or no and then you tell me why. GB. We're going to start with you, my friend. Uh, do you think that this is the last time that we're going to have to see Bardock in Dragon Ball Super? Yes or no, and why? I say possible, maybe. Uh, it's more in between, but well, uh, fuck, that's not a yes or no. I, <laughs> look, okay, you know what you you said that like, hey, you know, everyone's being fucking polite, and then all of a sudden, like, I'm trying to be nice and also give you my yes and no reasons. The reason why for yes, okay, the first reason why I'm saying yes is because at the same time, I can imagine for future chapters that they're like, okay, we'll just let Goku, uh, Vegeta, and also Granola finish it off there. But then also, I say no because. I think that there's going to be a way that maybe Goku ends it sort of similar to the way Bardock did, in which it's going to be like almost a panel to panel type of thing and does his like blast. And you see literally like maybe a let gain or, or whoever, sorry, gain the flashback gas game a flashback of how Bardock defeated him. Yeah, no, I think there'll definitely be like visual uh, representations of him to in the current day stuff for sure. Once Goku, I mean, I think Hayden actually in your first appearance on the show way back when you you talked about this, and I was like, "Damn it, dude, that's too good of an idea for them to not do." But yeah, I imagine we'll see him in that capacity. But I think that we're fully done with this part of the backstory. We don't need to go back to the flashback anymore. We've seen the conclusion of that, and now we're in the present day, so we can round out the rest of this shit show. That's really more what I mean by yes or no. Is there more uh, flashback to see? Then maybe that's the better question. Uh, I would say, yeah, I'd say no. So no, we're not going to see him again because we don't have more flashback to see. Not at all a so. convoluted question and answer process. Hayden, what do you think? Yes, no, and why? Okay, as a Bardock fan, I would hope a little bit more just for say like, hey, Manito, thanking him, and you know, thank you for all the stuff you've done, but not much more than that. Like, I don't expect like another any sort of let's at most, let's say four panels. For yeah, like, a little, like a little tag, like, thanks, man. Anyway, pretty back much the present day. I would want that and just Bardock saying, like, we never discussed this or anything like that, which also they like, hey, how come you never told? Like, don't tell him about this. Give him a reason or something. I don't know. I would expect Bardock to do that. But just for some reason, right there, a little bit of clarification for there. I don't, I, they don't have to over explain it. I hope is yeah. what they do. And then, but the, but I honestly feel like we're not going to get any more. It'll be more of a surprise if we get any more Bardock flashbacks, but I wouldn't, ex- I don't want anything more than that. So I'm honestly going to lean more towards no. Yeah, I think so too. I think we're all in the no camp except Grayson. What do you got, man? What do you think? Yes, no, and why? 
I feel like we should get more. Only reason why, because I don't really feel like he showed us a way to beat Bardock. I mean, to beat Gas. So, like, what power up? Yeah, we 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 know that. But <laughs> what else? Like, I don't I don't see. I don't really tanks. feel like he showed us like a strategy of how to beat him. So, if that was the whole point of this, then I feel like we are going to get more. But if this was just to show like. He did lose, I guess. I, I mean, yeah, this could be the end. I don't know. It just Dude, depends on how you think about that. That is another fucking fire point from you, man. You're two for two today. I don't. We're not in a fight anymore. Great point. Um, yeah, what is the point of having this guy come back and be the one to defeat him if all it was just like suddenly he got stronger for no explicitly stated reason and he didn't teach you th- these flashbacks did not teach you anything about the current day strategy on how to defeat him. It was cool though, right? It looked cool. Some shit blew up. That's like that's what I'm thinking about. I'm like, what can you take from that by listening to that? It goes by like what he was, um, Kyle said about Alex saying you still have stuff to learn. The only thought that could be is they're going to re- like use overconfidence against him to actually help um, incapacitate him to where they can actually beat him. That'd be the only thought I could actually think of aside from that, or it's a gag thing. Vegeta, we got to wish for our tails back. That's what we got to do. Oh my god, how funny would that be? We need to wish for him back so that way we can have somebody rip him off again so exactly. that we can go through a similar kind exactly. of transformation process. That's what's going through my head. Oh my god, Hayden, dude, killing it, man. Um, all right, so I think we're all kind of like mostly all set with Bardock. I mean, but I do want to get a little bit more of this flashback because then they say Frieza was coming at the end, so I kind of want to see what, what that's about. Yeah, I, I too would like to see that, uh, but I don't think we're going to. I mean, this because that's be... the only thing we don't know is their connection, Frieza and the um, Granola. Yeah, and we haven't we've seen only... any of them talk or anything. Yeah, we've seen no interaction between them. This would be an awesome opportunity for dropping in a hey, where the fuck, Frieza? At? Boy, shut your mouth when I tell you about making call that day on the floor. I don't know, man. I'd like to see him, but I, it wouldn't surprise me at all if they're like, no, nah, we don't want the flashback. We know that Frieza arrives. We don't need to see Frieza and the heat is interact at all. It's fine. No, it wouldn't surprise me if they do that. It was something I was thinking about earlier that was making me laugh in the podcast earlier. What if um, Alec shoots him in the back? <laughs> Who, Frieza? <laughs> yeah, I just think that'd be funny if he comes out of nowhere and just shoots him in the back. It's just My, finger slips. My finger slipped. That seemed like his way he tried to get rid of everybody. So if he, like, comes out and just... I don't think he's that dumb there. to think that he'd be able to do that to Frieza. And if he I did, mean, Goku. Goku got killed like that. So it must be if they're not prepared for oh, it. Oh, all right. You're going with that. Kind of, yeah. All right. You're a good point. I kind of forget that that thing kind of exists in Dragon Ball. It sucks that it exists in Dragon Ball. But, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I feel like Frieza would probably take the shot and be like, what the fuck? And then kill him. But we know that he lives. So presumably Frieza does not kill him after he gets shot. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I think it would be cool if we saw Frieza, but it I honestly be. don't think we are. Going I just to. don't know who, what side he'll be on. Um, I guess probably not on the on Granola and them side. I mean, Gas side. Yeah, he's got no reason to be on Goku and Vegeta side. So either, so I'm like, it's yeah. just like if I was him, I'll just destroy the whole planet from above. Yeah, he'd be like, you're all trying to kill me? Where <laughs> literally every single one in this party is trying to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, we don't really get any insight as to how Bardock actually beats him outside of who just looks stronger, right? And that kind of sucks. I'm not a big fan of that. But here's the other thing. It's like... Then he gets shot by Alex. So, I mean, did he win? You, I mean, he survived. So, yeah, he won. But here's the thing, man that leads you to believe that Goku is going to be the one to get the win in the present day. Right. And it's like uh, a a son making up for the father or like doing what the father aimed to do back then. Like he quote unquote defeated gas, I guess. I don't know. Didn't fully defeat him. He didn't kill him. Right. And the guy comes back to do more harm in the future. Isn't that exactly what we saw with uh, the Frieza arc? You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) Bardock tries to stand up to Frieza. He ultimately doesn't succeed in what he wants to do, but then Goku goes on years later to be able to carry out his father's dream, whether or not he's actually aware of it or not. This time it's a little bit different because he's like, oh shit, my dad, huh? Now I know that I'm living up to the memory of my dad and doing something that he couldn't accomplish in his life. Jesus, that was a lot of fucking words. Like, didn't we already do that with the Namekian and the Frieza arc? I mean, am I crazy? Am I overanalyzing this? Yes is the answer, but what do you think? I feel you, but I think 
since Granola is still alive, he's going to get the win. If they didn't want if if they if they wanted to get rid of Granola, they had a chance to. I feel like Granola is here for a reason. He's going to play the most pivotal moment. It's going to come out of somewhere. I hope, man. It's, that makes it way more satisfying that Bardock saves the kid that ends up being the one to defeat Gas. That makes more sense. I really do hope that Granola is the one that is the ultimate decide or the one who gets the win. But like we've been talking about, we talked about it then. We talked about it tonight. Like those visuals of Bardock and Goku mirroring each, mirroring each other as they both defeat Gas and side by side panels. That's way too good of an opportunity visually speaking for them to pass up. I have to imagine they're gonna. It's the fucking Goku show, bro. Like I feel you. Are I they gonna give think- it? To- to granola i hope man but i just i don't think they will <laughs> i think it's the power i think gr- gr- granola is like almost probably about the same amount of power he was against bardock where it looked like he was just demolishing him and i just don't i don't see how goku is just gonna jump to that power level i feel like they, what it's gonna do is he's probably gonna hold them all for some bullshit um and some moment arises when he's not paying attention you probably have granola shoot him with the two gun two eye guns and eyes or some shit or you probably gonna have to kill Alec first because i feel like Alec needs to die yeah dude guy keeps running around with a goddamn gun shooting literally everybody he has the opportunity to shoot he's such a dick <laughs> hey, yeah i yeah. feel like he has to be the first one to go hey, yo, stop shooting people man what the make hell it, make it like a broly thing if Alec dies he just goes crazy making it theoretically easier to be gas have no connection like no mind i like that i like that i <laughs> like that that would be nice that would be nice you would no you had to kill all of them his brothers and his sisters i i, I he might but i feel like if he kills yeah. Alec, it'll be have much more yeah, yeah it'll be much more it'd be like bro, like broly chile and lemo and all that with paragus if you killed chile and lemo broly would be upset if you kill paragus broly went mad mm, oh that would be nice but i don't know who will be able to handle him like who made a handle? Well, they have the fuse well, together. Like, well, I mean, like, I had, at this I point, had, he's too much for him right now. If he got I had a buddy first. who actually suggested they're gonna have to do fusion. That's the only possible way, but it's actually be uh Goku and Granola fusion, not Goku and Vegeta. Oh, that'd Which, be interesting. I'd like to see it. I don't think if they, they do will. that, they just want action figures. Like, oh, <laughs> well, I mean, we know that they do though. I'd be hyped for that for Goku. I'd be very hyped for that. That'd be a cool thing. That'd be the, that's something they were saying, like, because it has the parallels of Goku and Bardock doing everything, but Granola's supposed to be the one theoretically should be the one to get the kill. So they have the father fuse as one who's supposed to get the kill. It's two birds, one stone. I wasn't for it, but at the same time, mm. it'd be kind of cool. It would, it'd be, yeah. it would be it'd be interesting to see. Wouldn't I would like for poster. Vegeta to get a little mad though. Be like, "Fuck!" It's like when what do we what do we call can. him? Gr- Grinoku? Is that the Goku and Granola? Kakanola. Kakanola. Kakarot. Yeah, you probably gonna have to use the Kakarot name. Kakanola, because it it's Granola, Kakarot, Kakanola. Kakanola sounds like it'd be the name of a volcano or something. Probably. Yeah, with that type of power. From- one has the wish to be the scrum. But if, if that's what I was going to say. If um, Manito made that wish earlier to make Bardock stronger, he did not know the limit of his own Dragon Balls. Like, if you just wish for him to get stronger than him at that moment, when you could have made him the strongest in the universe. I just, I don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't think that makes sense in that we're, we know that he famously is about to go home and get blown the fuck up and his ass whooped. So I just don't think those Dragon Balls powered him up at all. Probably I'm just saying it. that it just be it be, it just be interesting to be like, damn, I could have made him the strongest in the universe. <laughs> like, you know, like I don't know, know. power my own ball. Uh, that pretty much comes to the conclusion of this chapter, guys. I don't know if anybody has any predictions they want to shoot out for the. I mean, we kind of did just talk about like who ultimately gets the W, Goku versus Granola. We know it's not going to be my boy Vegeta. So, um, anybody else have any predictions they want to get down for the record before we wrap this one up? I think Freeze is going to get the final KO. <laughs> and I think for Freeze one is going to swoop in and fucking. I think he, I feel like I feel like he knows Granola and them are doing this bullshit. I just don't feel like why Freeze wouldn't know. Have has it actually said why um, they spared Manito and Granola? Has it said that? And I just can't remember. Uh, why? No, because it wasn't. Didn't he make them work for him or something? Yeah, I guess working for him. Well, I know that's that true. I was, 
Okay, that's all I could remember because I was uh, the, you go back to the flashback. I thought I was going to what I mean. They have to flashback of him saying, "Hey, work for me," or why they didn't just kill him because you know he got in the way of stuff like that. You can be in opposition. So, yeah, I mean, he really could have done him a favor if he wanted to recruit Granola for his like sniper abilities and all that shit. How much upward power he had, he should have really done everybody a favor and just killed Benito and been like, "Yeah, yep. this kid belongs to us now. He's in our gang. <laughs> He's the honorary heater, bro." No. He, you know, why he didn't? Because remember, the Dragon made Balls? The, yes, because he said, "Oh, let me go see what that is." Or because it was the same where he was like, "Let me go check out what Bro, happened." Bro, before this arc started, Benito wasn't even the one in charge of the Dragon Balls. Think about that shit. Oh my! Oh, God. maybe that's how he had. We just busted open a plot hole, bro. Huh? Benito gets the Dragon Balls passed to him. No, oh, then no. he get, he get, he got he's, them passing on when they no, attack. He, he's he's physically given them too, as well as yeah. like ownership or responsibility for them. That's just me being a fucking dick, I guess. Go figure. Uh, all right, uh, Rayshon, I think you gave your uh, bold prediction. I, I'm not really sure if you were done with that. I I just cut in. See, how's it feel? I cut in on you. That was cool. See, it doesn't hurt my feelings. I thought we were just having a conversation. Bro, you don't got to be so hurtful toward your assessment of me, Ray. Uh, GB. What do you think, man? You got any crazy shit you want to get on the record? No, not really. I, I have nothing. This is now a segment called For the Record. GB has nothing for the record. Crazy, right? I usually do. Yeah, what the hell, man? You usually have all sorts of wild fucking theories. I don't know, man. Just y'all convince me. I, I believe every one of y'all is honestly. Yeah, me too, man. I believe all the shit I say out loud. That's problematic. Hayden, you have any wild shit you want to get? On the record. Uh, my only other thing is um, they might wish Bardock back for a brief time at the end of all this. Like, Goku meet him, because I feel like after he's going to hear all this, he'll be like, hey, I kind of want to meet my dad. Outside of that, that's all I got. I would I like that. Uh, I would like if they frame it like that, honestly. If, it, if he gets like a one-day pass from mm-hmm. Baba style, like that kind of deal, I'd the be thought, into that. Have you ever seen the Disney Pixar movie Onward? I have not, no. And that movie, them two, two, two elves basically want to bring their dad back and they have a revivigation spell that lasts for 24 hours. Mm. A lot of antics only last for five minutes, but they could do that, something like that. Have the Dragon Balls, because there's always a caveat to the two draw wish of, I want to be strongest, well, you'll die. So I want to see, I want him to come back to life. He'll come back to life for 48 hours. Uh, you know, interesting you brought up the caveat to the Dragon Balls. I think that that was kind of addressed in this chapter and we kind of glossed over it, but the intention of the wish, like if it's done for a good purpose, it seems like there's no caveat. Granola made that wish for sake of revenge and that's why there was a tremendous caveat to it. I think is how we're supposed to look at those Dragon Balls now. It's not like we've been calling it the monkey paw effect over the last six months because we've been talking about this same fucking bullshit for six months. But I, I think that they've kind of reframed the thinking on that as of this month to be like the intention of the wish kind of dictates whether or not there's going to be ramifications against you. So with that said, though, you think maybe gas, maybe that'll be it. Like they, the you know, gas did this or was given this wish oh, for bad reason. Change. Maybe, yeah, maybe that could, you know, maybe he burns through his time, much like we think that Granola is going to do at the end of this arc. Because, yeah, that'd be so sad. That'd be such a sad way to end it if he just burns through all his power. Well, that's a way that'll show an Alec. It'd be happen. better than hitting a Xeno button, dude. I, it would, but at the same time, that'd just be all this fun build up. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Oh, I just ran out of batteries. That's that'd, that'd be, be so very, sad. that'd be very fitting for i mean they really playing day. with batteries if you think because i mean they're not really fighting with their own power <laughs> yeah God. that's true granola I'd and gas are anyway i'd be very disappointed um all I right depend how they did it what like if mean? they somehow like change um granola like you don't die because your actions changed or something and like oh. it's a, and they change from gas that'd be i mean granola i'll be like okay that'd be kind of cool I don't know. I don't think that'll happen. I don't think the Bardock coming back thing ha- will happen either just because, you yeah, know, he was a shitty dude. He obviously didn't keep his body in the afterlife. He's not getting wished back, but I I don't know. I don't know. That's a, that's a hard one. That's a bold statement, Kyle. I don't think it's that bold. This, 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 this new Bardock kind of nice. He saved young kids and everything. If that don't take off some... Um, some Sims, help, some karma know. points. Yeah, right. That's maybe, what I'm saying. Maybe he did. Maybe, yo, imagine if that was Maybe it. he didn't actually kill anyone. 
Bro, imagine if they retcon did all this retcon to Bardock over the last whatever almost 10 years now. Just so that way they could get to this point to be like, actually, he wasn't that much of a bastard at all. He's actually a really swell dude. He kept his body when he died, and now we can wish him back, and Goku can know his biological dad. Imagine if they did some shit like that. That'd be so goofy. What if he'd been training all this time? And he hasn't. He doesn't have a body. He's dead. He's never coming back. All right? This is why they had to address (laughs) him in a flashback, because they still want to use the character, but they know that they can't, given the rules of the world. All right? I mean... (sighs) That's when I got you that use off my chest. I am God. What you say? Never died. That's when you use I am the creator. Yeah. Lord, I never died. Dragon Ball Maybe. Xenoverse, everybody. That's <laughs> <it's> canon. <laughs> I love the Xenoverse stuff. I wish they'd make a Xenoverse based cartoon, like full on episodes of like Super Dragon Ball Heroes, but I, I don't know. They'd have to do it better, obviously, not in six months. I actually don't. It's, I don't like Heroes. I don't know if I'm the only one, but I don't like it. I've been meaning to catch up. That'll be an episode that we do soon. Let's I don't think I've ever seen So. So if you're I'm new to the show this. and you've listened to us ramble this far, make sure you hit rate and subscribe. But uh, before we get out of here, let's do the plugs. Hayden, Dokkan Win. The, yeah, Dokkan Win. You can find us on Spotify and now on iTunes. It's so exciting to go on iTunes. I'm yeah, what the, the hell took you so long, bro? That's like where I, 70% of all traffic <laughs> comes from. I kept trying and I was like, yeah, you can't make it. They would not let me until one day I was finally like, I don't understand why every time I would, I would not, they would not let me make an Apple ID for the thing. And then finally one day it finally clicked. Don't know why I tried. So so it wasn't even about submission. It was about being able to like set up an account to be able to submit. Yeah. I kept trying to do it. And it said, sorry, you're not eligible to do this every single time for a year. Strange. I know. And now we're on iTunes. Congratulations, buddy. Welcome aboard. Yeah. And um, Rayshawn, respectfully, you need to watch Heroes. Don't, if you haven't seen it, it's good. It's not good, but it's fun. I it's like, like it's junk like, food, man. It's like it's junk fan food. service. It's Dragon Ball yeah. fan service. It's good fan service. Yeah. And I'm all about oh, that man. shit, man. Give me pizza every day of the week. I don't give a fuck. I'm a fat guy. I don't know. I used to be like not really wanting to watch the uncanon stuff, but I probably will. Don't be our guy. Don't, well, you just don't watch GT because it's not canon. I mean, for, before y'all made me watch it in December, I, that's how it was. Well, that's very closed minded of you. Well, it's just like, you know, I only, I only want to see stuff that is true. I don't want to see this and be like, well, why doesn't Goku turn Super Saiyan 4? And Yo, like, I hate, to break, it's, it's I like, hate to break it to you, man, but Dragon Ball is not a real thing, man. True, not true. Who cares? Just enjoy it. Dragon Ball is real. Oh Dragon yeah, it is. Is where I'm. I'm hoping to go to in the afterlife when I die. I'm hoping I get Isekai to Dragon Ball Z world. So I'm sick to believe it is real. I'd be sick as fuck, dude. What's going on with the Rayshon Katzen anime podcast? We just released a few two new episodes. One with John Stimmick, and we just released one with T Bray Sensei. He's a um, YouTuber, Naruto Baruto YouTuber. We don't have anything right now I have working on yet for the episode, but... Of course you do. One. You've always got shit in the works. Shut the fuck up. Make sure I'm selling like, himself short. Go listen to I the episode. To Go listen to the interview we did with John Stimmick, especially Stimmick, right? Yeah. Especially if you are interested in any way, shape, or form in learning more about voice acting. It's a very informative discussion. He's a very well-versed dude in that industry. Rachel did a killer job with the questions. Go listen to that episode. There's, another, there's a link to it in the show notes. I enjoyed it. You did very well. I won't watch the Boruto one because Boruto is a bore to me. Actually, I just don't fucking care about that world at all. Uh, GB, what's up with you, man? How's the NPC pod? I am on, well, the NPC, co- uh, NPC pod is doing well. Um, we're kind of slowly getting back into stuff, as I always say every time. Uh, it's just yeah, this is four like, months running of not having me and Rayshon, on, but you had Hayden on recently. What the fuck's up with well, that? Jokes on you. I literally just messaged him to let him know, and he said, "Cool, when?" And I said, uh, "Next time we do a podcast." And he said, "Okay, when's everyone free?" Meaning that he's asking all the NPC people as well uh, as me asking you guys, which we can talk about after the show. How many but, podcasts of people is it? Oh, I'm getting nervous. There's Don't like, get nervous. There's like about four other people. Let's see. Me, Paul. Uh, There'll probably be like six Jeremy. people total, which honestly gives me anxiety thinking about it, but I don't have to edit anything. So I'm going to Oh, hey, you said yeah. you wanted to be on it. So I do, man. You guys are yeah, fun. And you guys talk about stuff I don't normally get to talk about. I talk about <laughs> stupid, dumbass Dragon Ball. 
yeah, you can talk about gaming and stuff, which we talk about a lot of some of the p- political issues and also some of the things are. Oh, right. I love y'all podcast. Yep, I'm ready. I want to. Yo, Rayshon's gonna go on there and spit some real hot fire political takes. It's gonna be, and that is completely up to you if you want to do that or if you want to get canceled or not. I'm kidding. It's gonna be <laughs> right. incendiary. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not afraid. If these people want to cancel me, uh, that'd be that'd be good because I need some type of audience reaction underneath my um post so if i if, if even if it's a fuck you Hooba. that'd be something you know damn I mean? dude you are getting all the m-bombs in on this damn. episode it's like a book sh- uh, what do they call we those like bookends on the podcast we will damn. definitely not do that but anyways also i do a thing with my brother my brother streams and we do it every thursday and friday night at 8 p.m pacific standard time we do what is called a pokemon nuzlocke soul link it's very fun. Uh, it's been tr- a trial and error sort of thing because Yusuf, uh, my brother, keeps killing all of the Pokemon. So shout out to him. And the fuck do you mean you kill the Pokemon? What, you don't feed them? What is you let them? You let them play in traffic? What do you mean you kill the Pokemon? What the hell? I will Are explain you- later on after the show. If you don't know, then cl- you can clearly use something called Google and search up what is a Pokemon Nuzlocke Soul Link, and you can go ahead and find it there. And, and you think a randomizer? No, nah, dude. You think I'm gonna get some weird ass Pokemon shit suggested to me in my targeted ads? You get the hell out of here with that. Well, let anyway, me tell you Kyle, I was saying not you. I was more saying to the fan base. But either way. That is I mean, you I never have. sent me a link. So I, yeah, I've never seen a link once before in my life. If you want to send me one, you I'll try put to it just make notes. it seem like we Made wouldn't do it. Him, so, bro, yeah. we're very supportive of you, time. but we can't be supportive of you if you're not supportive of yourself. I literally I mean, host him on my channel every time. <laughs> you don't host me on your channel. I Twitch stream not at all. Dang. I literally do. Do you? I do every time. Every time that I've su- seen you on, I'm like, okay, I'll host you. Oh, you're so sweet. I love you. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, fuck you. Anyways. Come on, man. You, Kyle. <laughs> all right. Well, now that I've pissed off all my friends, go listen to Dokkan Wen, the Rayshon Gats and Anime podcast, and the NPC pod, which will soon feature a guest appearance for me and Rayshon. We're going on month four or whatever, but... Don't I mean, forget to shout out our advice pod. Oh, yeah. Part two of the advice pod should be coming out. Which I will be on soon. at some point. Yeah, almost oh, death, dude. You and everyone else, man. Everyone's like, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to do that. I think people need to understand. And don't get me wrong, I'm totally open to having guests on. All right, don't make this sound like uh, I'm shooting down the idea of having guests. I love the sure. idea of having guests, sure. but just sure. understand, really. it's a delicately curated balance of personalities between me, Rayshon, and Kelly, and the absurd bullshit that we talk about. It's not just you throw a mo- another motherfucker into the mix and all of a sudden hilarity continues to ensue. But here's another thing. I have a different personality than from all three of you guys. So it'd be a different perspective. Yeah, I see. Yeah, exactly. So therefore, Kyle, shut the fuck up and get me on that shit. <laughs> so now my 90 minute episode is going to be two hours. All right, well, all right. Be on the lookout for it. We're going to, eventually we're going to spin that off and do its own thing, but. In the meantime, we're going to continue to fuck around and play with some stuff. It's so uh, funny because everyone likes it. Yeah, we always get really good reactions to it. People like the stuff that we do with it. We cover some silly ass stuff. If you guys are out there and you see any Reddit stuff that catches your eye in the vein of what we're doing on those episodes, feel free to send it my way because we're always looking at suggestions. Rayshon's compiling a lot of the stuff. Kelly's compiling a lot of the stuff. I'm more editing, which is why you haven't heard part two because it takes a lot of editing. <laughs> um. Yeah, be on the lookout for that. Should be out very soon. And gentlemen, I appreciate your time tonight. Big long pre-show. We hung out uh, on Patreon. I want to thank the patrons real quick. Originally, I was going to play guitar and then have Hayden read the names, but I've uh, I've learned that my guitar does not really cut through uh, through the Zoom uh, noise gate. So here, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna drop in the music right here. And I'm going to thank my, uh, my my patrons real quick. Dallas Holkovich, Victor O. Roman, Marcus Woods, David oh, G. Man. Reese Andriotis, uh, Lil Reese. Baby Jaren, Dan Rivera, the OG. Baby Jaren! Lil Baby Jaren! And then, of course, the man, the myth, the legend, because he's got the best fucking last name, Brian Nacciori. 
but the old, I said it weird that time, but you know what I meant to say it like. I want to thank you guys for supporting the show. You guys keep this thing going because if I have to start paying for hosting for this, I don't think we're going to have it anymore. Was that a lightly veiled threat? Thinly veiled threat? Uh, Sean dropping N bombs all the time. <laughs> Three today. You can, Start, like, you can edit get them, my counter make out it, and make it a banana. Just make a it a banana, like, oh, banana. What, like a beep kind of deal? Is that what you think? Yeah, just be like, instead of saying, you know, be like banana. <laughs> <laughs> Or you could just do the be- the white equivalent and just say ninja. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, see, because the intent is still there in the word. You know what I mean? I don't think it's cool if you do that. Or you Ten years ago, maybe you random word. Doing that, but... Actually, here, since you're still recording, I could just literally say a word and then you could just place it upon what he says. Uh, okay, yo, and then I can keep this at the end as the tag and people would be like, why is this weird audio edit happen every time I think Rayshon says the N word? <laughs> Ready? Here we go. <laughs> go ahead. Puba. Hmm. I want to hear that over the, the, the things I said that over. Oh, you're bro, such I can't, a Puba. <laughs> I cannot wait for this final product. Super dope. 